As you've no doubt heard, or as most people in Britain no doubt know, in Glasgow we have two very famous football teams, Rangers and Celtic. And it, right, hooray, boo, hooray, give us a shout when you're finished. Right? So, <laughs> and never the twain shall meet. And when they're playing, the supporters of Celtic go to one end and the supporters of Rangers go to the other end and they shout at each other for 90 minutes and then they all go home. Now, <laughs> it can be quite heavy right enough. Hey, hey you nuns! I've summoned at you, feed you that open up. Oh. Oh. So, <laughs> and it's very heavy and very good. Don't butt in, that's what bad boys do. Now, this is a story about a wee Glasgow man who made the mistake of his life and went to the wrong end. <laughs> right. He was a wee bit drunkish, but he sobered up rapid when he discovered what had happened. And it was too late, he was too deep into the crowd. And he was surrounded by giant supporters of the opposition. <laughs> They're all growling round him. They'd never been that close to one before. So, so that's the scene. And he's standing there. Huh? Nice day for it, eh? So, and his team scored two goals. He went, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and eventually one of them spoke to him. Hey! Uh, what is it? Go and get me a bovril! For some obscure reason, Scotsmen drink bovril at football matches and at no other time in their lives. Go and get me a bovril! Are you okay? <laughs> You'll run away, wouldn't you? <laughs> take off one of your shoes. So he takes off his shoes. He's right, go. And he limps away for the bovril. He comes back and says, there's your bovril. He says, duh, here's a shoe. And there was a big jobby in it. Put it on! <laughs> I mean, oh, Christ almighty. <laughs> His team scored another two. Oh. Eventually another one spoke to him. Hey. Hey. Go and give me a bovro now. I leave your other shoe. So, shoe off, and he's limping away with one shoe full out in the Stormbrook. <laughs> they come back, here's a bottle. Ta, here's your other shoe. Same again. Put it on. Oh, right. <laughs> so he's standing there. There's a big space all around him. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Right. He's in abject misery. There's flies or. <laughs> And you can see his mates at the other end going, Hello, we are the champions! <laughs> and eventually, to his great relief, the game ended. He said, Right, on your way! Right, all right, all right. So he waited till most of the crowd were away. And he sort of squidged out of the ground. <laughs> he was going down the street, keeping close to the wall. And there's dogs following him. <laughs> And he came upon a television crew for the BBC, the camera, the whole works. Guy with a sheepskin jacket and a bonnet. Hello! Excuse <laughs> me, sir. Can I have a wee word in your ear, Matt? He says, look, we've been interviewing people here for a television about football violence. Can you just come a bit closer here, sir? Oh, no, Christ, you're saying thoughts. Can you... <laughs> I have a smell about here. I've got something in my shoe. 
Trish, <laughs> no, I'll get something from this one. Okay. We've been talking about football violence to a lot of the supporters. Have you anything to say to the viewers about it? Any original points of view? He says, ah, you're bloody right, I have. He says, give us that McCoy up one. Right. <laughs> and he stares the camera straight in the eye. He says, in my sincere opinion, football violence in this country will never end. Not as long as they are shitting in our shoes <laughs> and we are pissing in their bothrol. <laughs> <laughs>